Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Astra Militarum painting video. This one is going to be on the collector's miniature of Minka Lesk, an absolutely stunning Cadian miniature that came out a couple of weeks ago from Games Workshop and I managed to pick up through Air Hobby, so big thank you for them for uh, making it available to me. Um, it's one of those beautiful collector's models that a lot of us do buy and then we leave it, you know, on a cupboard or on a shelf or somewhere tucked away until we become better painters or anything like that. I know I've done a topic on this before and painted up a different miniature um, and I think it's important that I continue to make these videos where we paint up those collector's or special edition miniatures. I have got dozens and dozens of them sitting in boxes that are now wasted um, and I feel that it's it's, it's not good to have them tucked away. So I'm gonna be uh, doing a series going through and getting some of those awesome models painted up. I know we all like to keep them for a different project or maybe we become better painters, but always remember that there's so many products out there now for removing paint from miniatures. So if you make a mess of it or you change your mind a couple years down the line, just strip it and repaint it, no big deal. So yeah, I'm gonna do Minka Lesk. I'm excited for her. I'm currently reading the books that she's involved in right now and they're pretty awesome. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to continue doing what I am doing. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved in it, there are links to my Patreon below. You get access to a private Discord server and access to an extra video every single week. So it's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys. Okay, without further ado, let's get painting Minka Lesk. And this is Minka Lesk, an absolutely stunning miniature. I really do love the fact that they're giving us characters from certain books. I do kind of wish they would go back and give us characters from older books, like give us, you know, I don't know, Cyrus Kane or something like that, as opposed to characters from newer books. I know I've got an attachment to a lot of old characters and I would love to have them featured in my armies. But now that I'm a, a book and four chapters into the Minka Lesk series, I'm starting to get my own fondness for her. And I definitely want to use her in some games of Warhammer 40,000 in the future. Here's the miniature all constructed. There are alternative builds to her. You can either build her holding her las gun, which shows her as a young white shield as she features in the first book, or you have her as she is here with her power sword and bow pistol. Obviously she has risen through the ranks. I haven't quite gotten to that part of the books yet and I'm excited to find out how she manages to get there. I gave the model a chaos of black spray and then an overspray of gray seer. And then I went straight in with my normal Cadian painting scheme with Agro's dunes for all of the fatigues. And like I said in the intro to this video, we all have collector's miniatures lying around that we are, I don't know, afraid to paint or worried that we're going to ruin or, but uh, I definitely think it is more of a pity for them to be sat unloved, uh, left under beds or on shelves, as opposed to getting a paint job on them. So why not dig out an old miniature that you, uh, you bought and had plans to do and never did anything with? It'd be kind of a cool challenge to, uh, to do something with them. Get some nice models on the tabletop. You'd be surprised how proud you will be of those miniatures. But that's just me, my opinion. Obviously, if you like collecting them in the boxes, keep them in the boxes. That's totally up to you. But I know all the ones that I have uh, kept in boxes over the years had never intended to stay in boxes. I always had them, you know, earmarked for certain projects that never happened. Or uh, I actually had this horrible habit of buying two. And I'm like, one to paint now and one to paint when I'm a better painter. Like, that's, I don't know kind of mad thing that is to think like that instead of just enjoying it now but anyways i start to slap on more of my cadian scheme onto this miniature i'm liking her more and more some black templar used for things like boots straps the sheath of her sword no other details to be honest i like the scenic base that she has standing on the ruins of old cadia some old uh, ruined sandbags all shot up full of bullet holes a uh kind of a helmet skull on um, motif thing on the base i did think it was a cadian originally so i think they wrote a cadian helmet as if it's the the ruins of her fallen comrades but um by looking at the picture on the box that that was supposed to be a chaos uh the cultist skull head or skull but i kind of like my way more the uh, resistance of the cadians cadia stands always remember Is there any specific characters that you guys would like to see done from the Black Library series? I can think of so many. Cyphus Kane is definitely the one that jumps out to me the most, though. He's uh, definitely a fan favorite of mine. A dual box with him and Jürgen featured together would be fantastic. I know I would buy that in an absolute heartbeat like a lot of us would. 
We're still very much in the ugly stage of this miniature as we're slapping on all the base coats before we get to the shade stage. She is a joy to paint. Any miniature that's in these nice open poses, I'm always drawn to ones where the pose is in open so you can get at the chest really easily, get all that detail painted. You're not struggling to paint. Once that is a thing, I love it. I will always enjoy painting a miniature like this more than uh, one that's all closed up. Some metallics brought in to uh, base coat her bolt pistol. Blade of the sword, other little details like that. I'm curious now, wondering if we are going to get any more Cadian miniatures. Like she came out of nowhere, I didn't realize she was going to get released. But of course she was. And then we got some extra commissars as the uh, event miniatures last year or this year. And I do hope we haven't seen the end of more uh, Astro Militarum units. I would love to see more kits brought out. Just, just keep them coming. Plastic Catachans would be nice. Some more units for the Plastic Krieg would also be very tasty. Anything to bolster the ranks of the glorious Astro Militarum or Imperial Guard if you're an old sod like me. Okay, now we're in with the precision work. After the base coat and the shades have dried, and we've gone in with Carrick Stone, and we've carefully layered up her fatigues, leaving all that nice shadow work in all the creases and all the recesses. Jumping up to Wild Flesh, doing the same on her carapace armor, making sure to get her knees, going up into the chest armor. I definitely want to leave those dark lines. I want to leave it to be really stark, really sharp lines. This to me is obviously a beautiful character miniature, so something that I will spend more time on than a basic Cadian infantryman. As soon as the fatigues and the green armor are layered, the model the model almost looks done when you do those pieces. It always makes me happy when I get past that part. Corvus Black was then brought in to layer up any of the black bits, so the boots, she's the sword, cable the power sword, and that's it once again. <laughs> I always expect there to be more black parts, but there isn't really. It's time to move on to the skin now. So a recent video I did, uh, judging the time it takes to do uh, base coats with contrast or with layering. Um, I learned that I, I've been kind of suffering using uh, Cadian Flesh Tone and um, the Contrast Gulliman Flesh to do my skin tones. They're just not warm enough. Um, so what I've started to do now is I've added a Carriedberg Crimson layer into it. So after my base coat on my first layer, I add a Carriedberg Crimson coat, which adds a lot more kind of warmth and more of a pinky tone into the skin, which I think really helps it. Okay, so after the Carriedberg Crimson is dry, we go back in with our final highlight, Kizla Flesh, and we just do some very touch highlights, tops of cheek, top of nose, lips, you know, the fingers, a little on the knuckles. But we want to leave a lot of that warmth behind. Unfortunately, doing such a small part of the miniature with such a fine pointed brush, obviously it wants to focus anywhere other than there. But I definitely think the result on the face is a lot nicer doing it in this way, and I'm much happier with that result. More fine brown was brought in to highlight all of the brown parts, so all of her belts, her buckle, all the straps, and uh, there's some holding on her like shoulder armor and stuff like that. Really happy with how she's looking now. Lead Belcher was then brought in to highlight all of her metallics, so gold and silver parts of the miniatures. If you haven't seen how I do gold before, I literally the Reichland Flesh shade, or sorry, the Retributor armor, and then shade it down, and then I just use a little bit of Lead Belcher to add some kind of touch highlights. It gives a really nice kind of worn, tarnished looking gold. Um, and I always imagine everything in the Imperium is old. Even the saber has you know, been held by a hundred soldiers before it got to her. So nothing should look kind of shiny and pristine. It's now time for my favorite thing, which is adding transfers. And for her, I gave her a seven because she has a seven on the transfer on her back, on the box. So I presume at some point she's going to be part of some regiment that has seven in it. I gave her her traditional Acadia symbol on the right shoulder pad. And then I decided to go for something a little bit more fun and characterful. I've got Acadia Stan's kind of graffiti on her back. And I really like the idea of her being this brave, charismatic leader that's running forward into the depths of hell and trying to inspire all the soldiers behind her. So when they look up and see her charging the battle, seen across the, her back is plastered Cadia stands, which obviously gives them uh, a huge sense of pride and they charge into the depths of battle with her. So super happy with how uh, Minkalesque turned out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's something a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I liked it. 
And there we have it, another awesome Cadian miniature added to my guard shelf. Uh, super pleased with how she turned out. Uh, I now need to figure out what kind of a squad she is going to lead into battle. I'm currently about three chapters into the second of three books, so maybe I'll finish off the entire three book series and find out what kind of force she uh, tends to fight with at the end of her career, which is which miniature I decided to build with her power sword and her bolt pistol. Um, she is not at that level in my book series so far, so I'm excited to see how she gets there. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like drop a comment below asking me any questions you want and I will get back to each and every one of you guys and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please take two seconds of your day and smash that button it really does make a huge difference thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video I'll see you in the next one